Welcome to the session on the Family Belt uh, Link Tunnel. My name is uh, Michel Kreivel, Think Project, Banelux and Nordics. I'm responsible for the business development at Think Project. Uh, been aboard since uh, 2018. Uh, before that, I worked in the ERP industry, also in the contact industry since uh, 2002. So please let me share my screen from now and I will start then with the presentation. So data worth knowing on the Femin Belt Link and data worth knowing is the central theme that I think project will have over the coming years because we are confident and are convinced that data are the new gold for asset donors across the globe. So again, I already introduced myself. So this slide is obsolete. Um, let's go back to Think Project as a company with the locations uh, all over Europe right now with uh, locations in Germany, in the UK, in France and in Spain, and also smaller offices in Poland, in Austria and in the Netherlands. So this is the first region we are focusing on. And for next year, we will be moving into the Nordic region. So in Denmark, Sweden and in Norway. Second region we are focusing on is the APEC region with since 2019 a office in Hong Kong and since 2020 also offices in Auckland, New Zealand and in Australia in Sydney. So looking at the industries and the people we are supporting with our uh, solutions uh, divided into three main groups. First of all, the contractors with really famous names like Balta Bidi, Pearl from Austria, but also Skanska from Sweden and Ban from the Netherlands. Then the private asset owners with a focus on energy, on retail, and on um, yeah, the private asset owners then with names like Porsche, RWE, and IKEA. And the public asset owners, which I am mostly uh, uh, focusing on with really famous names like Deutsche Bahn, so the German rail operator, Tenet, that's the grid operator, the energy grid operator from the Netherlands and from Germany, but also Highways England and Heathrow Airport from the UK. So what is being built with our solutions? On the one hand, 50% of it consists of building construction, 35% of it is infrastructure and civil, and 15% of it will be infra industrial construction. But these uh, figures will change over the coming years, because like I said, the focus for us will be on the public asset owners. If we look at the development of Think Project over the last 10 years, it's quite impressive. We started in 2009 with 7 million euros turnover, and we hope to end this year with a turnover of 75 million euros. About 10,000 uh, users across the globe in 70 countries. For the 75 staff right now that are employed by Think Project, and uh, we have the headquarters still in Munich. So before we go over to the um, Femin Belt link itself, the data and also the solution we provide to the Femin organization, I would like to share a short video with you on the Femin Belt link. The planned fixed link between Denmark and Germany will be an immersed tunnel for both cars and trains. This animation shows how the tunnel will be built. The majority of the tunnel elements will be produced in a factory east of Rolbu Haun. The factory's facilities include production halls, docks and a working harbour. The halls, where the reinforcing modules will be prepared, are marked in red. The factory will also have eight production lines for casting the concrete elements. Production will take place in a continuous process, in which nine identical segments will be joined together to create a complete element. The finished tunnel element will be pushed in a dry dock and prepared for transport. Each element will be 217 meters long and will weigh over 70,000 tons. The tunnel will contain two railway tracks and two tubes, each with a two-lane motorway and an emergency lane. A service and emergency corridor will be located between the motorway tubes. To prepare transport, Watertight bulkheads are mounted and the dry dock is filled with water until the element floats. Now the floating tunnel element will be towed to the deep section of the basin. The water level in the basin is then lowered to match the level of the harbour. The dock gates are opened and the element can be towed out. The element is tugged to a holding area near the location where it will be immersed. 
It will then be immersed in a trench that has been excavated in advance while the element was being constructed. In the holding area near the trench, the tunnel element will be hooked up to floating pontoons. Then the element will be towed to its immersion site. Ballast tanks that have been fitted to the element are gradually filled with water to sink it. As the element slowly sinks, its movements are controlled by mooring wires. The new tunnel element is connected to the prior element. Next, water is pumped out between the bulkheads and the water pressure on the opposite, free end of the element will force the elements closer together, creating a watertight seal. The trench on both sides of the element is now backfilled with a layer of gravel to keep it in position, then a layer of sand. Finally, a protective layer of stones is laid on top. With a length of approximately 18 kilometers, the Fiman Belt Fixed Link will be the world's longest immersed combined road and train tunnel. I've seen it quite a lot, this video, but it's still really still impressive to see. And uh, well, news that came out uh, last uh, month is that the factory on uh, the tunnel will be reused for another project in the center of Copenhagen, crossing Nordhaven, a really dense area in Copenhagen, via the Lynetholm artificial island, and then going into the direction of the Swedish bridge, and also to the um, international airport of Copenhagen. And this will uh, this uh, project will start, I think, in 2022 or 2023, and it will have a budget of about 3 billion euros, so quite another astonishing project on Danish soil. So let's go um, to the Femen Belt link and the data that are connected to it. Like said in the video, it's the longest immersed tunnel in the world, about 18 kilometers long. Um, budget of about 6.9 billion euros right now, and again, Let's see what, uh, what at the end uh, the budget uh, eventually will be. It's a major connection in the string region. Well, uh, string region might not be uh, uh, a usual um, thing um, for you, but that's the, uh, the string region is uh, consisting of the city of Copenhagen, of Hamburg, of Oslo, uh, of Gothenburg, and of Stockholm. And this uh, Femen Belt link will uh, reduce the travel time, for example, between Hamburg and Copenhagen by one or two hours. And it will also be a very important connection between Scandinavia and Central European region, like Austria, Switzerland, but also Poland. And it will also eventually be a part of an uh, uh, inter-European rail network. So parties involved in the uh, Feynman Belt link. Um, there were three main packages like you saw in the video. First of all, the dredging and reclamation. So the dredging of the trench in which the tunnel elements will be laid and also the rec rec reclamation. So the reuse of the dredges material. And uh, this will be used to uh, make a, a, a new uh, natural environment uh, at the coast of Denmark. And as a Dutchie, I'm really proud that uh, two famous Dutch companies, the two famous Dutch dredges like Boskalis and Van Oort have had this opportunity to do this uh, part of the, uh, of the project. Then the civil works, the production and placement at the tunnel elements, and also the production of the ramps and the portals. There are three parties involved, the Royal BAM Group with two entities, BAM Infra from the Netherlands and Weiss and Freitag from Germany. Then also a Danish party is involved, Per Aslev and Van Schien Grand Construction from France is also involved. And then the third party, uh, the third uh, contract or the third place is the electrotechnical and mechanical works, and this one will be awarded in 2021. So it's not uh, uh, known yet who will do this part of the project. Um, as you can imagine, in uh, such a big project, and also with all kinds of uh, parts involved, it's really crucial to have the exchange and coordination of data in place. And it will mean that, uh, for example, the design interfaces between all the parties involved will have to be coordinated through a central platform. So that's where I come to the uh, solution we uh, will provide and have provided to Feynman. First of all, uh, why did Feynman choose us? First of all, Think Project's full range of solutions that can support the customer throughout the life cycle of an asset. And this is really important because again, like we said already, uh, most asset owners nowadays are struggling really 
with the handover from design and construction into the asset management phase. And team project solutions also improve the collaboration between all the participants uh, in a project by providing easy access to data at every stage of the design, construction and operations process. So let's take a look now at the proposed solution for Fairman, and then we will start with the basis solution that we are now putting in place at the lower part of the sheet. You see Think Project TPCDE, and you see also D side BIM. In TPCDE, there will be the master data register. There will be a, a 3D models and packages that will be distributed. The review processes will be in place in Think Project CDE, and also the technical queries will be in place. And then besides this, we have the expert tool DSI BIM for the BIM management. Looking at DSI BIM, and again, I've seen a lot of software solutions in the past, but I'm really impressed by uh, the things that DSI BIM can do. What you see on the left here is a lot of uh, different file formats that can be uh, merged via DSI BIM. So whether it's Autodesk file formats with Civil 3D, whether it's Bentley with open roads or open bridges or with MicroStation, whether it's uh, Trimble with Tecla, they can all be merged into one aggregated 3D model. Besides this, uh, 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 on top of the 3D models itself, it can also uh, uh, be merged via point cloud data. So they can be merged uh, together with the 3D models, but also for example, planning data can be merged into this aggregated model. Um, if you have this aggregated model, you can also uh, carry out 4D planning simulation via these had been, and also 5D cost uh, quantity takeoff via these had been, and you will also be able to steer virtual engines via these had been. And on top of that, uh, as a cherry on the cake, so to say, it will also be possible to carry out uh, in-depth clash detection in the side BIM. So a really Swiss knife application. And it will also mean that, for example, uh, standalone and really isolated applications like Solibri for clash detection will be a thing of the past. By putting together Think Project Common Data Environment and the side BIM, you will be really uh, be able to manage the complete value chain. So from managing models until the use of BIM via 4D scheduling, 5D quantity takeoff, and also uh, a, a, a handover as else-built documentation to the O&M phase. Then the proposed future solution for Fairman. And then we go to the upper side of the, of the screen. And the first one I would like to uh, discuss here is our CMART, con CMART contract management solution. So CMART is dealing, for, for example, with non-conformities, with variations, with claims, but also with invoices. And as you can imagine, uh, integrating CMAR with a team project common data environment will give you a really strong combination because it will be a combination then between the worlds of, the, of, of design, of construction, but also of contract management. For example, uh, you can imagine there will be a design change. This one will be triggered via D side BIM, so via the lower part. It will be distributed via the Think Project Common Data Environment, and it will also uh, be uh, available to the contract management team in CMAR via DeepLink. On the other hand, um, the variation and the claim that will be managed via CMAR will also be visible uh, in the Think Project Common Data Environment for the other stakeholders in the project team. So in this case, you can link data on the one hand, design and construction data, and on the other hand, you can, uh, you can link uh, contractual data to each other. And then uh, going forward to RAM, placed in the middle of, of the application landscape. And as you can imagine, what I already said is that uh, asset owners are really struggling now uh, with, with the handover from uh, the design and construction phase into the O&M phase. And uh, ensuring data consistency is really of vital importance to asset owners. So this is why it's also, also that is placed in the middle of our, of our application landscape. And what you see here is that via RAM, you will be able to define uh, the asset hierarchy, but you will also be able to set up an asset repository. And this, this defining of the asset hierarchy, but also the setup of the asset repository will eventually be a basis for all the data linking over the different project stages uh, that are in a, in a mega project like this. So really important. And it's what we see now in practice is that asset owners want to start with the end in mind. So they want to start with the asset repository and with the asset hierarchy, and then go back into the process to design 
construction and not starting with design and construction and then doing a handover to O&M. So that's really a crucial difference between the old situation and the new situation. All what I said before is based on the motto of Think Project. We would like to uh, connect separated worlds of the tactical project reality, whether it's in a construction or in the O&M phase, the design reality, but also in uh, the uh, contract and commercial reality into one really merged world. And this is what we will see in the future by merging these three separate worlds you will uh, have a, a real good insight in the, uh, the data linking and also then the interactions between the different phases in a project. And um, we say wisdom is, is found in fully connected worlds and we call it construction intelligence. So please, if you want uh, any information on um, the Think Project portfolio, uh, let's connect on LinkedIn on via mobile. And uh, well, I'm happy now to uh, give it back uh, to Phil. What a great presentation and what a fascinating project. Thank it you is. so much, Michelle. For, thank you. Um, thank you for sharing with us. It's, it's such an innovative approach that uh, the firm and are taking. And it's wonderful to see your full portfolio of Think Project products being deployed on this, this mega project.